Okay, so a terrible thing has happened and we have a huge problem. And that problem is, is we learned HTML and we built a web page, but this web page is the ugliest thing that has ever existed. So we need to take this web page and make it into something that looks nice. And in order to make it turn into something that looks nice, we're going to learn CSS. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and you'll never, ever, ever need to know that. Except at some point, you'll be like, oh, I understand why it's cascading, or maybe you'll never understand why it's cascading, but I'm sure not gonna tell you right now. So, when you visit the home pages of like mathematicians or computer scientists, all of their websites are in like Comic Sans and they just have white backgrounds and they have black text and blue links and it just looks like this. And that's not because mathematicians and computer science people all just really love this style and are kind of like sharing hot tips on designing web pages with each other. It means that they're not using CSS. They're just using plain HTML like this in order to build a web page. So what we're going to do is we are going to use CSS to style our page so that it looks fancy and nice and cool. There are three ways to add CSS to a page. One is the right way, one is the kind of wrong way, and one is the real bad way. Usually when you learn, they teach you the real bad way. I'm gonna teach you the moderately wrong way and then force you to do it the right way in the future. So if I said we were going to add CSS to this page, you would say that's impossible. This is an HTML page. The only language that belongs on this page is HTML. And I say, good observation, but check this out. There is a tag in HTML called the style tag. And do you know what goes inside of the style tag? Not more stuff like this, not more HTML. CSS is what goes inside of the style tag. So even though this is a .html file, between the beginning of this and the end of this, everything we type is going to be CSS. So let's learn CSS. How does it work? Well, um, the most important thing that you need is a selector. So you are here, I'll add some exclamation points because it's exciting. Because what you need to do is select stuff on the page that you are going to style. Maybe we wanna select this headline or this headline or these paragraphs or the entire page or whatever. So we already actually know how selectors work. If we want to select this number one headline, this biggest title that we have, we type H1. And the thing that now makes this CSS instead of HTML is, well, the fact that we don't use angle brackets ever, um, but CSS looks like this. So we're saying, hey, I've selected the H1, and now I'm gonna define a bunch of rules about it, such as, uh, let's make the color red. We have a colon, we have a semicolon. On the left-hand side, we have the name of the attribute. And on the right-hand side, we have what we are going to set it to be. Save, refresh. So now color is red. Um, CSS has a list of what all of these can be. Um, color, if we change the background, we can say background purple. And now suddenly, the background of this H1 is purple. And yes, the H1 does go all the way across. So when you write CSS, it's a little bit more particular than HTML. So if we, let's say I went, I went down here and I deleted these closing P tags. Maybe I'll close this. Yeah, I'll get rid of that H4 tag too. And I save it. When I refresh the page, it thinks, oh, this is all in H4, but it still kind of puts it 
on different lines. So it's trying its best to save us here. But if we forget a semicolon like that, suddenly all of our CSS breaks. So when you're writing CSS, you have to be very careful that you don't accidentally do something wrong. Um, so we wanna make sure we have our thing here, our thing here, and our thing here. Um, four things, every line, and life will be good. And if we want to get technical, this here is called a CSS property, and every property gets set to a value. Um, so if you want to find a list of CSS properties, CSS properties, this web page is pretty ugly, but it's a really, really good way to browse. Wow, this is so easy to read. I was going to send you to W3Schools uh, or Mozilla Developer Network, but just Googling and getting this list, whew, that's great. So, all right, we have font size and we can change the font size. Oh, this will be confusing unless you know what's happening. Uh, let's make this H1 bigger. If you wanna make it bigger, we just keep adding new lines here. As long as our properties are inside of these curly braces, uh, we can just type line after line after line after line. So font size, uh, 100 pixels. Save, refresh, bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It's great, we could go for forever. We can make it small, three pixels, so nice and tiny, can't even see it. Side in there, I promise. Uh, we can change the kind of font. So you would think that if font size is the size of the font, then you'd use like font, font maybe to do the actual font. No, it's font family, obviously. Um, so if you wanna turn it to Comic Sans, which is technically called Comic Sans MS, we refresh and there we are good to go. Beautiful, right? Now, when you write CSS, this is all CSS is. If we wanna change what all of our paragraphs look like, we say, hey, we're gonna use the selector of P to select everything that is a P tag, and then we'll change things about that too. Font size, 16 pixels, font family, have impact on here to make this real ugly, yeah. You can do it with emphasis too. Emphasis, color, green. So now every time you emphasize, it will be green. That is the ugliest green I've ever seen. Um, but you'll see that the green up here and the green down there, they match because they're both M tags. Um, there are a million different attributes and you use them all for different things. But one of the most painful parts of dealing with CSS is something that's called the box model. Uh, and the box model is this thing that has to do with spacing and padding and borders and margins. Um, so let's screw around with, I guess, this one, this H3. So if we have this H3, solid one pixel black, we're gonna add a border around it. Or no, let's do it for the image. So that image down there now has a border around it. And if I think that this is a little, this image is a little too close to this text, I can add a margin. Margin, 30 pixels. That will draw a margin of 30 pixels all the way around this. Spacing of 30 pixels. I could also specifically say, hey, put a margin on the top and then it'll just do the margin on the top or margin bottom, put it on the bottom. Uh, along with margin, there's also padding. So padding goes inside of your border. Usually it's not a border, it's a background. Eh, it's transparent behind him, but you can see this is 20 pixels between the cat and this, and then another 20 pixels or 30 pixels. This 30 pixels is padding, this 30 pixels is margin. Guess what? None of this matters. None of this matters. If you wanted to space things out in a real like complicated, special, magic way, yes, padding and background and margin and all of that would be 
your life. It's, it's all that you would ever do um, forever and ever and ever. But to save you from having to memorize all of these things, to save you from having to think about CSS, to think about all of these rules, um, next up, we are going to learn, or eh, we're like 90% of the way to learning about something called bootstrap. So instead of doing these things, like for example, here's what a button looks like. I'm a button. So that's an ugly looking button, right? It would be great if you could have a cool, modern, internet looking button. And you could try to get there by doing CSS, right? Background, green, color, yellow, padding, 30 pixels, whatever. It's not gonna look nice, but doesn't really do much either. Um, but instead of you having to make all those decisions, we are gonna push those decisions off to someone else so that we don't have to think about CSS even though we're using it. And that's gonna be called Bootstrap. So that's on its way.